Um, today we're going to do a walk around of our new caravan. We've got the 11 foot Oztrack Tanami. Um, a fair few of you guys have been asking for a walk around video, especially people wanting to buy this van. Um, it is an East Coast company, so we sort of bought this van sight unseen and there's not a lot of content on the internet, either on Facebook or YouTube, doing a full walk around um, of these vans. Um, so when we wanted to buy this van, we really needed exactly what we're providing here. So we try to go in depth about the whole van, all its features, um, and then also how to use things. Um, just a full disclaimer here, guys. We're not sponsored by Oztrack um, in any way, shape or form. We've paid full retail price for this van. Um, so we can give you honest feedback um, about what we think we won't um, piss in your pocket about if it's like really good or really bad. We'll just tell you straight how it is um, These videos will be broken up into two parts So we first of all we'll do the walk around and how to use things and then the next video Which we'll be putting out next week will be a full review and exactly what we think of this van um, In all its beauty and all its flaws um, we'll show you everything that we're happy with and not happy with so Stay tuned for that all right guys, I'm going to show you how to set up the Tanami um, X11. So first thing you're going to do is undo all the all the pins up on the latches. Um, I'm about six foot two, so if you're sure, I recommend you getting a step or something. Um, so you go around the van and you undo all these latches. you're going to do is turn your 12 volt on and then pop your step down so it comes with an electric step pretty handy top up so all you have to do is just take two pins out of here and then that lifts up and then do the front as well just like so there's two little safety screw-ins here for the rear wheel, so you just got to remove them, and then there's just a safety pin latch that you undo. That's all gas strut assisted, so it's not very heavy. Um, there's two latches on these sides. These are fully lockable, so you can lock this up if you want. We haven't bothered yet, but we probably will when we go around Australia. Just pull that. Um, that two more latches up here that comes down this is probably the heaviest part about it um, and then this bit just hinges up like that it's on gas struts sometimes it hits in that then you just got a few latches just through here just like that this side and then just like that like so and then I'll put the awning out. So another good thing about this van, it comes standard with an electric awning. So all you have to do is just press a button and it starts to come out. Um, they do say you don't have to hold it, but it does get flimsy as it gets further away from the caravan. So I always hold it. And then once it gets to a certain stage, probably halfway, what I like to do is just pull the legs out and they're just hidden up in this gutter here. And all they do is just slide out like that. And then there's just a simple latch. And that's the awning set up. So yeah, that's the whole setup, set up pretty much. I don't know how long that took, it probably takes five minutes or so. Alright, so I guess we'll start at the front. Um, the drawbar is pretty sturdy, it's made out of um, pretty thick steel for the chassis, hot dipped in galve. Um, the chassis measurements are on the website. To start with, it's a Mick Hitch Uni Glide Hitch. Um, it's a little bit of a stuff around to get it on, but it seems to work well for us. Um, seven pin trailer plug, breakaway lead, um, handbrake. It's also got a arc jockey wheel, which is one of the better, 
better jockey wheels. Um, we need that so we can get the caravan high enough off, off the ground to get the trailer actually on the back of the car. Um, there's a tap at the front on the drawbar. Um, two big um, storage boxes. The top one's just for the uh, poles for your annex, and that comes in a nice and neat canvas bag. Um, and it's just stored up there, still heaps of room in there for us. Um, in this one here, the bigger one, is just your gas storage. So it's got room for two nine kilo bottles. And then we also keep like chocks, um, extension leads, that sort of thing in there. It's pretty messy at the moment. We like to just chuck things wherever we can chuck them for the moment anyway. Um, so we'll come around the side here. So, Trailer is sitting on come standard with mud terrain tyres and these rims. Um, pretty specky sort of setup. It's got trailing arm suspension, um, two shockies and one spring per wheel. And it's pretty soft. It's good for little bumps and stuff. Um, it doesn't sort of shake the van around too much. It just absorbs it, which is good. Um, coming around here, this is the dropout section. It probably extends two and a half feet. Um, that's where you sleep. That's got the king size bed inside. Down under here, we've got two recovery points, um, one on each side, um, and also your stabilizers on each corner. Um, what else can I tell you? One spare wheel. The 13 footer comes with the two, but the 11 only comes with the one. Um, and then we've got your hot water cover. Um, so whenever you're using the hot water system, you've got to take that cover off. We've also got the tank inlet for your big tank. So it's got two tanks, 120 and a, one, and a 150 litre tank. Um, so yeah, that's there. Got mains inlet, so that's for your caravan park or if you're plugging it home. And then also an outdoor shower, which is handy if you want to wash the sand off your feet before you go inside. I guess you've got to walk around to the other side anyway and get dirty again, but hey, it's a luxury. Um, you got your toilet cassette and then also a tunnel boot that goes all the way to the other side of the van and we just keep chairs and stuff inside um it is a bit hard to reach all the way in there so what they've done is they've made the two cupboards inside the van actually meet up with this tunnel boot um and that just makes it easier to get things out um this is where all your annex and stuff is kept um your canvas for your annex and there's some stuff there that Oztrack have sent with the van. We haven't really gone through it yet. All the little storage compartment, the doors have compression locks to keep the dust out and they've already come preset pretty well, um, pretty tight, which is good. Just here is where your external shower ensuite clips onto the canvas. Right. Um, this is our toilet. So if you come inside, you've got the top part of the cassette, which you put your rinse in, so the pink one. And then the bottom cassette oh, comes out like that. Um, and that's where you empty the cassette and you put your blue chemical in there. I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> All right. right, around the front we've got a bar counter. So at the moment it looks pretty messy. We just keep our cups, coffee and stuff here. Here we've got the slide kitchen. It's got two locking pins, so you want to pull it right up. Oh my gosh. Right up and then turn it so it doesn't get hooked on the rubber like we did. All right, underneath the kitchen, there is a little drop down stabilizing leg. You've got the windbreak. and then pops into that little slot there. In here, a little bit of storage. And then if you come around the back, um, your gas is just slid in here, so you just pull it all out, as well as your kitchen sink so normally we just pop a bucket down and chuck that in the bucket so the water gets filtered in there um, at the back is your gas bayonet 
you just twist and pull and then that <laughs> twists and pulls you there. Awesome. And Keelan always does it for me. <laughs> Then you've got your 240 there. We've got some USBs, one amp and 2.1 amp on this side cigarette lighter and then some something points. It's external lighting points, we think. We're not too sure um, about them little plugins there. Hot water here. Um, and then you've got lights, one, two, and those are all separate. So you can turn on the ones that you need. All right, if you come over, um, over here, we've got four different gas burners. When we first got it, we had a little bit of trouble lighting it. So what you want to do is turn it on, hold it on to your highest flame. Once you've lit it, you need to hold it for 15 seconds. And then when you release, it'll stay on. Light. And that's it. So the 11 comes with a pretty big fridge slide. I believe you can fit a 75 or 80 litre fridge. Um, obviously it comes out on the slide. We don't have a fridge at the moment. Um, we're in the market for one. But they've also sent us a table, which we have no idea where we're meant to put it in a 11 foot van. So I don't know if that's a stuff up or not. Um, inside the compartment, we've got 240 volt outlet. Um, so if you want to run your fridge off the inverter, 240 volt, you can. And then you've also got the Anderson plug and cigarette outlet, outlet depending on what um, plug you have on your fridge. Um, there's also a fan, and I believe that's built in with a thermostat. So once it gets over a certain temperature, it actually kicks in and ventilates this whole area. Um, so that goes back in. Um, and then on the back of this lid, you'll actually find the instructions of how the annexes go together. So you've got your shower annex and also this other annex. Um, so if you're wondering how that works, that's where that is. Um, we've got a couple external speakers that are connected up to the CB radio, um, which is pretty cool. That seems to be going pretty good, pretty loud. Um, and then inside, I'll go through the um, electrical panel. So let me take my shoes off or Sarah will crucify me. Um, so this will probably look pretty daunting to someone that doesn't understand exactly what's going on. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll start at the top. We've got two um, water tank, fresh water tank gauges. So the front tank's a 50 litre tank for this 11 model. And the rear tank is 120 litres. So we've got 170 litres total. Um, the grey water tank is here as well. Um, and that's a black gauge, so you know which one that is. So that's good. We've also got a little um, percentage gauge on our batteries. Um, in this van, we've got two, two, uh, two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. Um, and then you've also got your voltage meter and how much amps you're currently using. So we're using zero and we're sitting on 13.9 volts. In regards to the switches, you've got your main switch, which is your 12 volt power. That needs to be on before anything else will work. That's sort of your main switch. Um, you've got your fridge, your lights, your plugs, and your pump. Um, so you've got your radio here, which comes standard for this van. I believe it comes standard for all the models. You've got two outlets, so USB and cigarette outlet. That's something this van has a lot of, which is cigarette outlet points, which is awesome. Um, you've got your Truma hot water system. So you've got two preset temperatures here, 60 and 70 degrees. I'll go through in a minute how to use that. Um, you've got your inverter. All you have to do with your inverter is make sure the circuit breaker is on underneath the bed. Click power, well hold power. You'll hear a beep. Comes up with these two codes and it should come up with a voltage. 13.8 volts is, that's what we're sitting on currently. Um, and then you've got 240 power at all your outlets. Um, I'll turn that off. You've got all your light switches down here. So all these switches switch on separate lights. We need to label them because it's really confusing. Um, and then I've already spoken about the awning switch and the step switch. This little protecting screen. So if you've got kids and stuff, they can't actually tamper with it unless they open it. Um, you could even put a lock on that if you really wanted to, to stop people messing with it. All right, guys, so I'm going to be explaining to you how to use the Truma 14 litre hot water system. Um, something we had a lot of trouble with because it didn't come with any information. Um, in the caravan and obviously we didn't get a handover so the first thing you're going to do is make sure your gas is turned on from your bottle so turn the bottle top to on 
um, and make sure your valve is also open to that gas bottle that you've selected and turned on. The next thing you're going to do is walk around the other side of the van and take your um, little white gas cover off. Um, that's really important. If you don't do that, it will come off as fault straight away. Um, the third thing you're going to do, if you haven't used your hot water system yet, you want to purge the line. So there will be air in your gas line so that the whole idea of purging it is to get that air out so there's free flowing gas. So all you have to do there is just crank the burner, make sure gas is coming out conti continuously from the burner um, and then you'll be all the air will be out of the system and you'll be able to light your Truma hot water system. Um, next thing you're going to do is go around and purge all the hot water taps. So all that does is just pull water into that Truma hot water system. Um, you need to do that for all the taps if it's the first time you've used this system. So you've got to go to the sink, you've got to go to the external shower, you've got to go to the shower inside and then also the basin inside and turn the hot water on. And all that does is bring hot water into the um, Truma system. And you're going to actually pre-select what preheat you're going to do, which is either 60 or 70 degrees via the controller um, in the switch panel. So you select one of those um, settings and then you wait. So you sit there and wait for 30 seconds. Normally, if there's going to be a fault, it would pop up within 30 seconds. That's sort of what's been happening for me. And that either means there's gas in the line, um, you haven't taken your white cover off the back of the caravan, or there's no water in your Truma hot water system. All right, so over here we've got two um, 240 volt outlets. Um, that's obviously hooked straight up to the inverter. We've got our 12 volt outlet for your cigarette um, lighter, which we don't use a lot of, to be honest. Um, this van also comes standard with the Dometic um, aircon, which is good. We didn't have to pay anything extra for this. Um, that's one thing that's good about Oztrack. It does come with a lot of extras. Um, you've got your remote mounted up here so that turns it on and off but it does need to be connected to 240 volt power so we'll end up getting a um, generator or just use it when we're at caravan parks um what else i should explain to you the uh, 12 volt system underneath the bed um, um, so i'll go through each section so this section here is actually storage um, that's if you're wondering how much under bed storage these vans have because we certainly were there's not much at all um, under this section here, we've got the 2000 watt um, Enerdrive inverter, um, which is a, a pretty big inverter for 11 foot van. You've also got your circuit breakers for your mains, um, AC and inverter. So if you're wondering why your AC or your inverter is not working, make sure it is turned on here. Um, there's also a 240 volt multi-stage charger. So when you're plugged into mains, it'll automatically kick in and start charging your batteries with your 240 volt. Um, you've got your solar regulator. Um, and that's about it in here. These vans don't come standard with a DC to DC charger. So that's saying you'll have to pay extra. Um, we're getting a Enerdrive DC to DC 40 amp charger installed purely because we're already running Enerdrive and it's good, good gear. Um, and you need good gear when you go on remote. So um, in this part, we've got the batteries. So like I said before, they're your two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. Um, you've also got your changeover tank um, valve. So once you run out of your front tank or your rear tank, you just turn the valve 180 degrees and then it'll start pumping from the other tank. Um, that's something that we didn't know and we had to work out ourselves. Um, in this section, you've got your Truma hot water. So that's a 14 litre unit. Um, and also there's a little yellow valve in here. So if you want to drain the water out of that Truma because it's contaminated or something, um, you just flick that little yellow valve um, in the middle of the screen there. And yeah, that'll drain the water out of that system. Um, solar. So on the roof is pretty much covered with solar panels. Um, we were thinking about converting these AGMs to lithium but we'll have a few issues. There's only 300 watts of solar. Um, and if you go lithium, I've been um, advised you need more solar than that. Um, and there's not a lot of space up there to mount any more panels. So we run a, a semi-flexible solar panel. Um, right, all you want to do is flip the bed over like that. All right, on both sides of the bed, we've got a little reading light. We've got two little pouches here. You've got your USB plugs cigarette plug again and then a little storage container 
For this one, it has one slot and then the other side is actually blocked. And then on this side, there's full space. Is that why you chose this side of the bed? Yes. Um, my side also has like a pouch that probably fit your laptop or something in, whereas this side probably only fit like an iPad. So yeah, I chose wisely. Um, all of the windows have got the solar screen and then the mozzie screen. Just open those and all you want to do is press and turn, push it out. Oh my God, every time. There we go. <laughs> um, some vents up the top here. They're on the sides and up the top there. You've got a skylight, which also opens up the same as the windows. Ah, oh, shivers, that's boiling. Push it open and it opens up, but it's super hot at the moment. <laughs> right, it comes with a little TV. On top of the roof, we've got a little mushroom antenna. To be honest, it only works when we're in like cities or towns. It doesn't really work anywhere else. Then we've got drawer storage space. Three of those drawers are all that size. And then the bottom one is more of like a shoe space. Um, over on this side, there's one massive cupboard, which we'll probably put some drawers into. And then on the other side, it's where your electrics are, so there's not much room there. Said so these ones are little storage ones, but this bottom one goes through to the tunnel boot. So while Keelan thinks that that's good, I think it's very annoying because we've kind of lost space inside the van. But I guess you could convert it. Drawers up the top. Another cupboard. It comes with a fire extinguisher. Another side cupboard. And then this one is a bit of a half cupboard again. All right, the ensuite. Mm. All right, so it's got a full ensuite. We've got the sink. In here, there is a little storage, two shelves. Then up the top, we've got these two storage units. Bit of a mess. Toilet. And then the shower, which has the low hanging one, and then you can pop it up high if you're tall. The shower is very spacious and comes with this, so none of your stuff gets wet. And you can turn right around in here. <laughs> up the top, we've got a fan, so killing. Yeah, so it's got two speeds. You've got forward and reverse, so two different directions, not speeds. Um, so you can suck or blow. That doesn't sound very good, but yeah, it does both. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the bathroom. One last thing, guys, um, the specs, um, so weights, dimensions of the van, I'll put them up somewhere, um, somewhere here. Shout out to Todd Lauren as well, who gave us this um, pretty exclusive little filming spot near Perth. There's not many um, spots that are quiet enough to film, so thanks for sharing this one with us. Um, go check his channel out. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.